Uh, and you wait, and wait. Yeah, tough it on. Tough it on there. You want to Sorry. Yeah. Clear my file. Are we stuck? Does that make us start? Yeah, I hadn't realised that that's actually the start. And Mrs Wade's just gone. <laughs> so, just running up, at least I know the way. I'm on the LWDA Sussex Stride 52. But it's actually 52.7 miles, so I'm going to call it the 53. We're starting from Plumpton College um, with some very nice horses here. Just dipped my card in, number 90, and uh, off we go. Oh, blooming hell. Yeah, I think that's her up ahead. <laughs> she just sort of took off. No hanging around, no flies on her. It's a lovely day down here and today I thought I'd just talk to you about how I train for 50 miles with limited time and energy and sleep um, because I know this is the case for a lot of people, um, kids or no kids, everybody's busy, everybody's time poor and not everybody sleeps well. So. That's what I'm going to be talking about today, interspersed with some lovely views of this beautiful scenery on such a gorgeous day. So stick with me to find out more. Big pedals. Oh. So I found her. Here's Mrs Wade and her Lovely husband Vaughan. Oh no. Hi Vaughan. <laughs> I thought you were just doing the last bit, Vaughan. Oh, I was well, until this morning and he was and then he saw I the decided I saw the sun and I changed my socks <laughs> and I thought yeah, yeah I'll go for all of it. Brilliant. <laughs> Why not? And how how was your recce uh, yesterday? Um <laughs> lovely, lovely outing, lovely afternoon. We didn't need to do it because it's really easy. Yeah, it's just the south down, um, way all the way. Yeah, home, very easy, it? it's very well way marked. Brilliant. Um, but it gave us a good focus for our outing yesterday, so we just went back to the last checkpoint and then forwards again. Ace! We did 9.6 miles. Brilliant! Yesterday, a little warm up. Absolutely gorgeous day. Guess who forgot the sun cream? The ginger one! <laughs> but luckily, there were some really lovely people. Nikki and Martin, big up to you. They gave me their factor a million sun cream, so I'm all set. I'm not going to fry. So this is where we're headed. Up here, up onto the South Downs Way. Now today I am doing something very naughty. Nothing new on race day, apart from this t-shirt, which is a Saw running t-shirt. So I interviewed the founder of Saw um, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, check the link out here, top of the screen, um, about uh, how eco-friendly and sustainable their running clothing is. So I'm wearing a size large. I think I could have gone for medium. I heard that it was really athletic cut and I like it a bit baggy. So I think that's why I went for a large, but didn't need to. Um, but it seems nice. It seems comfy so far. But yeah, that's a bit naughty. Nothing new on race day. So it's a bit of an uphill now, like a bit of a, just a gentle hike uphill so I can actually talk. So I think now would be a good time to tell you how I train for a 50 mile event, being time poor and exhausted. So there's, there's two aspects to the training. One is prep, which I'll get to in a minute. And the, the second one is actual training, like physical training. So I'll just take you through what I do in my week. Oh, we can see the sea. We hope to be at the Seven Sisters by about five ish, half five uh, ish. <laughs> so, Monday, I look after Finley, my little boy. He's three in January um, and he uh, is very active, so I'm often sort of just running around with him. 
moral of the story when taking care of a toddler always wear a sports bra um so he's scooting around we're running walking i maybe do a little jog with him in the pram like 5k maybe but most often not really um uh, and mostly i've done a long run on the sunday so happy to just do active recovery with finley on the monday Ooh. on the tuesday i do a bit of a run <laughs> Um, so I, I take Finley to nursery and if I got time I will let him scoot down and I'll run with him and it's downhill all the way so I just get like a mile warm up, drop him at nursery, then I go for a run, maybe just an hour or something like that, just steady pace, chatting pace, nothing special, if it's hot I'll jump in the river and then go home and I'll start work probably about 11. So this is where being freelance really makes a difference because I am able to drop Finley at nursery at nine o'clock and then go for my run then. So by the time I'm back and showered, I am really honestly starting work at about half 10 earliest, then 11, so. So this is the first checkpoint. Thanks. Lovely, Thanks. loads of food. So yeah, I am time poor, but I do work for myself. So that works in my favor. Otherwise you'd probably have to sort of tag team with a partner perhaps to go early before nursery or go in your lunch break or maybe even go in the evening when they're in bed, but I'm so exhausted. That's like an absolute no-no for me. Uh, Wednesday is Weights Wednesday. So since I turned 40 and since I DNF'd the Manx Mountain Marathon back in April, 2023, I've been a real stickler for doing weights, like lifting some heavy weights. I only do like half an hour. And sometimes it's a bit half-hearted to be honest, but I just try to keep that in there, in the routine. I do some squats, some lunges, with a, like a barbell across, I don't know, 20 kilograms, sometimes, you know, build up to more. Um, and then squat lunges I do with two dumbbells. And then I do like, not sit-ups, but you know, like uh, supermans. And um, I can't remember what else I do. I'll link up to a strength and conditioning video there that I've done in the past so that you can follow it if you want. I think I've done a hit one, but any strength and conditioning. Oh, buy my book as well, link here. That will show you some good routines to do. <laughs> Hello. 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 Like, comment and subscribe. I don't yes. It's right there. Definitely. Right there. Yeah. I don't enjoy. <laughs> enjoy, guys. <laughs> You'll be famous. Wow. Subscribe later. <laughs> Right, so Thursday is then um, hill sprints. So even though it's ultra running training, I still could keep a bit of speed work in the program. So I do six to 10 times 60 seconds effort up a small runnable hill, which is just in a field, like about um, half a mile from my house. But I, I warm up to it by doing maybe one to two miles, just steady jogging first. And if I can't fit it in during the day, I have been known to push Finley in the buggy to halfway up the hill, give him my iPhone to watch cartoons, and then I do my hill sprints whilst I go running past him. And every time I go past, he gives me a stranger and stranger look. So that's one way of fitting that kind of training in with your kid, if they're happy to sit and watch iPad. I would never do that on a road because I don't want someone to steal him or think that he's an abandoned child. So middle of a field works nicely. You only get the odd dog walker and they're less likely to steal your child. Then Friday, I usually have a bit of a rest. Uh, maybe I'll do a walk at lunchtime or something, just a bit of active recovery. Saturday is my day to look after Finley again. So I sometimes do park run with him in the buggy, but I found that if I do park run with him in the buggy, that sort of scuppers my long run. I feel tired for my long run. In, um, I feel tired for the long run on the Sunday. So I have been known just to sort of just bob about with Finley on the Saturday. Um, you know, take him for a little bike ride, maybe carry him in the backpack a little bit, although he's getting a bit heavy for that now. And then on Sunday, it's daddy day. So I get, usually I take a half day and I join them for swimming in the afternoon because it's good recovery for the legs and fun as a family. 
Oh. Mm, the taste is really nice. Mmm. Oh, good. So I take from like, I don't know, like two at least hours on the Sunday uh, morning to uh, up to five hours, depending on how close I am to the event. So I'll try to do like three hours generally. And often I will go down, I'll run like three or so miles to the bottom of the hill that goes up to Easton on the hill, which is called Gamekeepers. And I just do hill reps of that. And I do it chatting on the phone to my sister. I listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts about the race that I'm training for, if I can, because that just makes me feel way more prepared. And I usually can't get to them to recce, so that's also really handy from that point of view as well. Um, so that just keeps my spirits up for doing multiple reps of the same hill. Um, I can plan a hilly route around my area, but it's, it's easier to do the hill reps. Um, that is, gets me the most amount of ascent in the shortest space of time. I don't really have any time to spend driving to anywhere, um, so I've just limited time. But if I do, I have been known to go to Bradgate Park, just north of Leicester. There's a 100 metre ascent hill there, and I do like six reps of that and stuff like that. And the reps are not like the sprint reps on the Thursday. The reps are jogging um, and, and hiking, to be honest, um, with the poles. Um, hiking with poles and with the backpack and with all the kit that I'm going to be using in the race so that is key really because this is like your replication of race day and Gamekeeper's Hill is it's a bit like this track it's a bit it's a bit like this track it's gritty it's gravelly it's you know wobbly uneven so it's a bit like most race terrains I'm training for and I usually put in uh, more water than I need to make the bag heavier than what I'll be carrying on race day because then when you get to race day it feels lighter <laughs> so um uh, yeah so that's that um then the preparation so preparing for a 50 mile race um never used to do this um till I got DNF I never even used to have any clue what the cutoffs were. If you used to bob along, I'll ah, probably be fine. Now, <laughs> I am not probably fine. So, um, in my 40s, a lot slower, uh, and it used to be a lot less gung ho. So now, I rely on making myself one of these maps. So, this is a bit different because it's an LWDA event. So, I've I made a map of the course. Um, printed it all out, highlighted it because you have to navigate on these. So the navigation is very basic and easy, but you do have to be able to navigate to know where you're going. Um, go on a course if you have no clue, or just go out and practice if you're a bit rusty. And then what I'll do is I've marked on every checkpoint on the map. You don't have to do this if, if you've got a waymark place, by the way. Um, mark every checkpoint on, mark the time that I think I'm going to be there, mark the opening times of the checkpoint, perhaps what food's there. And then I put on next to that how far I've got to go for the next checkpoint as well, just so I've got that information really handy. And then also done myself a little overview of it as well at the bottom here. So just so got all all seven or eight checkpoints on there, all seven or eight checkpoints, and the distance between them, the um, the time distance, the time that I think it will take me to get between them, um, and yeah, cumulative and the spaces between them as well. So that makes you feel loads more prepared, means you're in control. Um, it means you know if you need to pick up the pace a bit or if you've got a bit of time to slow down and sort stuff out. Um, so that has been a major part of my prep as well. So I couldn't recommend that highly enough. Other part of your prep is like making sure your gear fits and stuff like that. So um, that's done on all your long runs. So yeah, that's how I train for a 50 mile race with just three runs a week. Uh, yeah, and one weight session. Genuinely, that is all I do. Um, here we have the most amazing beef stew, yeah. which has been delicious. Thank you so much. And this lovely man has been serving us. Thank you. <laughs> and Mrs. Wade's got some custard. She's yeah. gonna jam into her gob and go. Mm. And I am gonna run after her with this apple pie. Yeah, right. Off we go into the night. 
Okay, well, not, not quite yet. <laughs> Exit CP, turn left, three. So it's just us now. Yes, just us now. <laughs> Vaughan's got a bad knee, so he's not going to push it today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This love Look at this for a village green. I do do a lot of walking. <laughs> Try and walk everywhere as well. I don't really count that. You can have a look on my Strava if you want to see what I do. I mark all my walks as runs just so that it comes up as a blob in that weekly overview training thing they have. And I don't get scared of anything. Yeah. What? Um, it doesn't mark walks in the same way. Um, so yeah, have a look on Strava. But I hope that's been helpful for you if you are pressured for time and thinking, oh my goodness, I can't train for one of these 50 milers. The thing is, it's a lot of just jogging like this, easy jogging and slowing down for a walk and it all feels a bit too hard. So good luck. Let me know in the comments below what 50 miler you have entered and if this training overview helped you. Um, my coach is Tim Piggott um, and he does a lot of chats on the YouTube channel. So do check out the playlist just here from him for loads of really useful ultra training advice from 50k to 100 miles and um yeah i'm i'm on my journey to 100 miles this is a qualifying race for the 100 miler that i want to do so um follow me in my journey over the next year and uh see how we get on yeah let me know what you're doing in the comments below and i'll see you on the trails We're still running. We've done over 30 miles now. It'll be 32 ish. So, nearly there. approaching 48 miles and I have a blister on my right foot my feet really hurt my knees really ache and my hips really ache and uh, I just don't think it's a good idea to do 100 miles I really don't it's like 50 is enough it's like having a second child you don't need to do it so yeah, I don't think I want to run a hundred miles. I'm really sorry, but I don't. Feeling a bit miserable. Um, 
feet hurt, knees hurt, blister, uh, hips hurt. And it's at this point that I always think it would be a very bad idea to do 100 miles. Very bad idea. We just did a rather large and unexpected detour. <laughs> but we're over it now, as you can see. <laughs> and only five miles to the finish. So we carried on down the restricted byway, we missed the right turn and carried on all the way down to the B road. We've been very lucky with the weather, haven't we? Yeah, really nice weather. <sighs> Beautiful day. And a warm evening as well. Mm. It's really warm. Yay, we're going the right way! Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we finally made it! <laughs> Yay! Hooray! <laughs> Only about five miles extra to the plan! <laughs> Thank you! Start and finish, there we are. Oh. We have finished! Well done you! Yay! <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh. Ticket, Only about please. four miles extra. <laughs> oh, is, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made our own little fun run. <laughs> when do we get our certificate? That gentleman over there will print it out in a minute. Yay! Sorry. Yeah. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Well done. Sorry. Just don't stand in front of that, you might die. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh. How was it? <laughs> yes. Tough. Yeah. 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 It is lovely, yeah. I tell you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. You're free. You're free. Oh. You're free. Oh. Cool. Can I present you with your certificate? Well done, all the navigating. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are no words apart from I don't think I want to do a hundred miles because my feet really hurt <laughs> and I'm very tired. <laughs> 